hi friends welcome to Jafido International now today we got something really exciting for you what what do we represent when I come here to talk about Jafido International It's all about enriching your mindset and why do we want our mindset enriched we want it to grow to develop because when it's developed it helps you to create success create the things you are looking for in life and so this is why I am so excited whenever I come here to talk from the Joy Fido International platform so my name is Joy Fido and welcome on board so what is the topic today um, the topic today says free your mindset Free your mind to enjoy your life. Free your mind to enjoy your life. Now, why is this such an exciting topic? Recently, I've been really, really into understanding our mind. It's one of the biggest topics I'm dealing with at the moment. And one of the programs I'm coming up with is, is going to be focusing on mind development. How I can help all of us are there to develop our mind so we can develop our life so free your mind to enjoy life now this is something that's really really awesome and by the time I'm done with this you will see how amazing this is this this thought just came to me only recently and I always feel so privileged whenever I find myself with thoughts that are so empowering. Because the minute your thoughts are free, you're going to find that your life becomes a lot easier to live. And so I feel really excited that messages like this come through me. And knowing me when they come i am more than excited to share them the reason i must share them is i feel i feel I'm, i feel like people are losing out if i don't share what i know with them so that's why the minute i get an idea again mindset something comes to my mind something comes to my spirit i immediately come out and want to share it with you so let, let's go into this the first thing usually you know me i want to take you through the biggest or the most important book that we know that helps us with our life is the bible and one of the first things it says is seek ye first the kingdom of god i'll, I'll read that passage out to you matthew 6 verse 33 and it says but seek, seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so where is the kingdom of god the kingdom of god right now for us humans is in our mind and so for us to get a decent life we need to start by understanding our mind and there's another really wise saying that says man know thyself man know thyself and somehow i've heard that saying over and over and i used to think it was a bible passage but it's actually a wise saying from some of the greek mythology man know thyself so when i researched that then it, it kind of connected me to the bible as well and in the bible proverbs 4 verse 23 it says keep your heart vigilant for from it flows the spring of life keep your heart and you know how last time we were talking about mind and heart most people when they hear mind auto goes into their heart and some people goes into their brain they think in the brain and the heart are the same thing as the mind so when the bible is saying keep your heart vigilant is referencing your mind as well keep it open keep it strong keep it ready because from there flows the spring of life what is the spring of life the spring of life is what makes us who we are it's what keeps us going and one of the biggest things that really really touched me i realized i woke up one morning and I asked myself how much did i pay 
to be alive today? How much did you pay to be alive? To wake up this morning, how much did you pay? To say, okay, here God, take this amount of money and make me wake up today. Or how much is your life worth? These are the kind of questions that, that you have no answers for. I mean, people like Steve Jobs, you know, the, the, the guy who actually made the, the Apple pro, um, um, uh, company become a, as great as, as he is. Steve Jobs, when he was ill and was, you know, put on the, on the, on the sick bed, he said the most expensive bed is the sick bed. Because you cannot instruct anyone, you cannot tell anyone to go and lie there for you. This is a man that was great in his own right. He, he was so unique, he created these amazing products that become what we all call the iPhone, the iPad, the, all the i everything, the Apple Incorporation. Steve Jobs put it together. But when his life was getting over and he was so sick and on his sick bed, he realized how valuable life was. And he suddenly said, there is no price tag to life. And how expensive is this sick bed? Because imagine all the knowledge or the information or the skills, everything that made him who he was as this great human being. And suddenly he could not leave the sick bed. And he realized how expensive it was. So that's the question we need to ask ourselves. How valuable is our life? How much, if we were to put a price tag on our life, would we pay? And how much do, would we have had to pay to wake up each morning? So, realizing that it is priceless and it's something that is absolutely an opportunity and a gift. The, the life we have, the air we breathe, who we are is a gift. But what do we do as humans? We worry over things that do not add up, that do not make any sense. And so this is gradually taking me to a bigger understanding of why we need to free our mind. So then I really wanted to know, what is life? What is life? Because for me, I've had the experience of losing a lot of loved ones. A lot of loved ones. My mom died when I was absolutely young, about five or six years. I never understood the love of a mom. Then my dad died much later, and then my brothers, and my sister, and my, my nephew. And so, the amount of loss I've had on loved ones has been immense. And then, I started questioning, what is the meaning of life? What is life? Why do we even have to be here? And you remember I did that program on, um, uh, the, the, there, was a, there was a book we were reading, the, the, the pro, what was it called again, that book? Um, something towards the essence of life and the purpose-driven purpose life it was. And when I, book, I saw that book, I was curious. I wanted to know why, what is life? And then we read it, nearly finished, but of course so many other things came and we didn't really finish it on screen, but I read the book and again it's about understanding what life is. But you know what my personal view is about life, which is why this video is so important today. I wrote it down, I said, Life is experiencing the passage of time. Life is experiencing the passage of time. When that came to me, it was so shocking. Because this is every one of us. All of us. So, now let, let's say we look back into history and you look at your mentors, people you love to hear about, people that are amazing. For me, one of them was Diana, Lady Di uh, Princess Diana. And when Princess Diana died, um, I was actually pregnant with my second daughter. And it touched my soul. I mean, I've never met this woman, but 
the way she carried herself, the way she was glamorous, she was beautiful, she was, she was caring, she was understanding whatever she wore, she stood out, she might be wearing just jeans and a shirt and she's amazing and she's wearing this beautiful evening gown and she stands out and so, and she was so touching, she had to take her kids to go and touch people who were suffering from AIDS, something that's never done in the royal family. So this woman's life touched mine and I loved her, just like millions of people who loved her. And then her life was cut short for whatever reasons that happened. And so when you look at people like that who kind of like have it all ideally you think they have it all and greater people like Brian Lincoln and Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King and and even the the horrible ones like uh, um, you know people who have come and caused problems people who have been you know really wicked like Hitler and all the ones who have greater great things Everybody comes and goes. Everybody comes and goes. And so it is that experiencing the passage of time. So for each of us, there is a beginning and there is an end. That's just the way life is. So this is a given. We know it. But you know what's funny? And I will say what's really funny, especially us black people. I wouldn't know if I should generalize and say black people. But I'll say, especially us Africans, or Nigerians in particular, we, we like to pretend. We really, really like to pretend that there is not going to be an end to us. That's just the way we are. We, we hide it at the back of my, our mind, you know? You know there's that saying that you, you bury your head in the sand. That's what we all do. We bury our head in the sand and pretend that there's not going to be an end and if there is an end you know just the, the scenario we had with jesus christ we will then find a culprit yes our savior died he was betrayed and all that followed god had written it this is how it's going to be it was for him to experience being human so for whatever reasons that Julius um, um, Judas had to be the one who did that, that's fine. For whatever it was, but you see, that's the same thing with us Africans. Even if we we become sick, let's say we we we're, we're eating unhealthy. Let's say the environment we live in so much has happened and is affecting our health. Let's say so many things are going on in our lives. Let's say we're stressed out and we start being ill from that we have high blood pressure or we get stroke and then diabetes and whatever the the lifestyle illness that's beginning to become what our experiences are in this generation that we are now because in the past um there used to be sicknesses that are airborne and you know like the cholera and somebody might get cholera and die from it but now it is a lifestyle choice we've been told that's what's happening to us and so Whatever that could have been that happened, typically in Nigeria where I come from, we will find a way to tie it to somebody. And that's the way it is. But of course, apart from that, when we also have like really clear cases where somebody actually gets openly poisoned or somebody has been murdered, which happened recently in my family, you, you, know, you know that these things happen. And that is the end of that life so there is going to be a beginning and there's going to be, going to be an end to every one of us so depending on what it is depending on what it is that eventually leads to the end of our life this is our life it's going to be that way because when we look into history people have come and gone and that's it but now the bigger message that made me decide, you know what, I've got to share this with you, is what are we doing? What are we doing as human beings to enjoy this life that is priceless? What are we doing? Now you find 
most of us knowingly bible said it clearly again that we may last up to 70 years and when we are lucky longer or less we know that what are we doing to make our life the the life we've been given the gift we've been given called life to experience this passage of this time that we have what are we doing to make it easier to make it comfortable to make it fun what are we doing that's where the problem is and that's why this topic is free your mind what i found out is which was a huge shock to me finding this out what i found out is we lock ourselves in our mind we are prisoners of our mind we are slaves of, of our mind remember the bible said from your heart flows the spring of life so when we have locked our mind up what causes us to lock our mind up to become this prisoners of our mind or become these slaves of our mind or become these enemies of our mind what what causes that what's causing that is the fact that we're taking on things that are so unnecessary we're taking on so many things that are so unnecessary what are these type of things we take on hatred we take on anger we become bitter we become envious we become irritated and so when we piled on all of this and where do you see the the the, the hang they hang in our mind and whatever goes on in that mind is what is going to become who we are the spring of the life that we become but I tell you what the, the, the little secret is that came to me. And it was, life itself, life itself, it's a bit like, you know when, when somebody comes to you and what they, what they normally say is, oh, this is a trick question. You know when you've been asked a trick question? And so usually a trick question is, they will ask you something and, and it's like, you don't have to answer that. And sometimes people will say, oh, is that a trick question? Yeah, because um, they will just take it, they, they will just throw the question at you in a concluded format, as in, oh, this is it. So you're not meant to say, oh, this is how I feel, or this is not how I feel. It's a question that is granted, this is it. And so most times you have to say, oh, that was a trick question then. So that's what's happening to us. Life itself. I have found out throws tricks at us this is mind-blowing I'm telling you this is mind-blowing how did I find this out I don't know but you know what God talks to me and God tells me things and once he has I am privileged enough to get this I have to share it with you and one of the biggest things I'm beginning to allow myself to accept is my greatness every one of us is great in our own way so you need to celebrate your greatness this is how it is so life throws tricks at us and i'll tell you why life does that so we know now that we have a given time to be here the passage of time life is a passage of time but what happens tricks the tricks of life throws itself at us constantly but why? That's why I'm asking why. The reason that happens is so that we don't have fun here. So that we don't enjoy the life that is an opportunity, that is a gift. So we live such miserable lives that our time is done in a short time. And then you look back and you say, oh, excuse me, I only lived for 30 years but I didn't have any fun. I only lived for 15 years but where was the fun? So, what was the point of my being here? Because I've asked that so many times of my relatives who keep living. 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. My mom wasn't even up to 40 years. So, I keep asking, why? What did they achieve?
shake. That's the trick, trick of life. And the trick of life is to confuse you, to, to break you, to destroy your spirit, to weaken you such that you do not have time to enjoy this gift. And your time is done. How does that happen? And so you're getting angry at other people. You're getting bitter at things that are happening around you. You're getting wound up by everybody around you. You're irritated with the listings that goes on. And so when these things are happening, what, what, what goes on with your state of mind this spring of life? You give up. You give up by, by being angry. You, you give in to life. You fall into the trick of life. And by the time you start facing all these problems, you have forgotten to enjoy this gift of life. And you know what happens sometimes? People actually give up and give in. And they actually take their own life. They take their own life because they realize, look at all this frustration around me. My, there is no job. My job is a mess. My friends are a mess. My, 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 my relatives are a mess. My, my family is a mess. My, my parents don't understand me. My friends don't understand me. My, everyone is an enemy. And so you get into that state, you get worked up, and then what happens? People go and then they just hang themselves and they fall in the tracks of a coming train and they fall into the sea and they, the cases and the stories of this happening is getting worse and worse and you get people who are getting so so worked up because they didn't buy the latest iphone they didn't buy the latest designer shoes the latest designer bags the latest clothes and they give up and you know now we're in this Instagram age their friends look so pretty on Instagram they don't look pretty enough but you don't understand that you have such greatness in you that the bigger reason for your being is that God sent you here with a purpose the purpose to create amazing things and some of these amazing things I'm gonna be bringing them out on this channel as we go along and one of the ones I've understood, I broke it down called, um, I think I call it Mato. It's going to come up in the rest of our videos as we go along. M stands for mind. Our mind is the biggest creator of who we are. In our mind, I've talked about this in a few other videos. This book, The Science of Getting Rich, is one of the best books that guided me to understand my mind. Anything you plant in your mind, you can grow it. And once you read books like this, you find that there is no need for hatred. There's no need for envy. There's no need for, for um, uh, 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 fear. There's no need for worry. There is no need to be anxious and angry. Because your mind has the answer to every problem you face. And that's the mind. Hence, we're talking about the mind. Hence, my dream is to develop your mind, to enrich your mind so that you begin to see bigger pictures of this great person that you are for the glory of God. And so once you understand the mind, then the next thing is A, which is the abilities. You have that ability to do anything. This is where your skills come in, which is where, you know, like with the training we have offered, this is our home training pack with all these CDs and DV, you know, DVDs that gives you skills. Your hands are ready. Once your mind can tell your hands what to do, it will do it. And you have this fertile ground called your mind that anything you plant in there can, can grow. And so why then are we so concerned and so worried and so anxious and so angry? And then we have our being relationships. Every person in your life is a gift from God. You need to appreciate people in your life. You need to cut out the negativity. I am experiencing things like this all the time. People, people just feel you shouldn't be there. You know, whatever 
you do? If you don't do anything, you're hated. You do something, you're hated. And the other day, I just wrote nicely on my Facebook channel and I said, you know what? People should not worry anymore about what other people think about them. Because even Jesus Christ, our Savior, who came here with the purest of hearts, was hated and was eventually killed for committing no crime. Now imagine me, imagine you, imagine anybody else. We step on people's toes all the time without knowing. And so it is so expected that no matter what you do, you will not be loved. And so this is why we should not worry about what people think about us. But every relationship in your life is a blessing. And you need to capitalize on that. And then the T is time. This is this created time, this short span of time that God has given us. None of us ask for it. He has given us. Only He knows the beginning and the end. And this is why we must appreciate the time we are here and make the best of it. And then L is the life that we have. Did you pay any money to wake up this morning? No. Did you pay money to be alive? No. Great people have come and go. So for that life that you have, you need to be grateful for it. And then E is your experiences. Experiences of life are rare. And I tell you, this is, this is so touching. The experiences will go through. And I, and I tell you why this is so important for me, experiences. I grew up. I just saw myself, you know how you realize who you are eventually? And I saw myself, yes, without a mother, and I had to grow up with my stepmother, and the experience wasn't a typical what you get today. Okay, so I know I've talked about this a few times, and of course I'm going to trouble my half-sisters and my, and, my, and my relatives, but I am telling you how it was. And I'm telling you now for you to feel sorry for me, but I'm telling you because I want people out there to relate to it. Relate to it in the sense of your case is not the worst case in life. Whatever you are going through right now is not the worst case in life. And that's why this video is so necessary. Free your mind. Because I realize that everything we undertake, everything we take on in our lives is by us allowing our mind to hold us down. Because we have, we have closed things into our, our mind, we have imprinted things into our mind that the mind is what is now guiding us. And that's why the mind is what is imprisoning us. It is our mind that is locking us down. It is our mind that is enslaving us. And if you can release yourself from your mind, if you can open your mind and tell your mind, you know what, this is all done, it's okay, I understand, you are protecting me, but you know what, I don't need to take this on. Your life will be a lot easier. You will enjoy this short span of time passage of time experiencing the passage of time you will enjoy this passage of time that we have here on it because it's so hurtful to find out that so many of us walk through this passage of time unhappy we walk through this passage of time struggling we walk through this passage of time with no purpose we walk through this passage of time not knowing why we're here and that's why I need to share this message with you. Because if I can touch as many lives as are there and empower you and enrich you to enjoy, to wake up to the reality that we have been tricked, we have been tricked all these years, we've been tricked by life to confuse us so we live this life, this passage in anger, in desperation. Because that's what it is. slowly through mine and I'll tell you where I I equally became I struggle with this and that's why I'm sharing this with you I have been struggling with understanding what life is why has it been such a struggle 
growing up now with a stepmom who never really cared and all she ever wished for me was not to even know what life was or not even talking about life because nobody really knew what life is or nobody knows but her focus was to distract me and end me nowhere but of course i realized that you know what you just have to stay strong okay so your mom is not there so what live with whatever it is and so i became strong and live with it finish with this time mom growing up slowly this is me now in nigeria from the local village that i came from into a little city then called Port Harcourt. i'm living with my brothers now my big brother then he gets married and guess what i'm just about to get into university actually i'm going to university my first holiday to come and spend holiday with my family and my brother throws me out of the house why because now he's married a wife who suddenly did not want to see me in the house because i was giving her consent i bothered her because i'm in school and she never went to school so why should she be in school suddenly to my brother i am arrogant i'm irritating i think i know too much and all the negatives you can find and so my brother throws me out of his house and now i'm out there living with my my my, my cousins then luckily i go back to school and as god to have it i was able to keep finding accommodation in my university until i finished and i left there and i went to um, um, lagos then to find a job but of course um the community where i come from is a community where people just automatically write us off Oh, they don't mean anything. They don't know anything. And so, I have that at the back of my mind while growing up. But I've reminded myself, you know what? It does not matter where I come from because I am my own person. And so I did not take that on. And so now in Lagos, from Port Harcourt, they think, oh yeah, River State, what do you people know? And so it was a struggle again to find a job. I'm living with my friends. I don't have anyone in Lagos. But luckily, eventually, I got a job. And so I'm growing in Port Harcourt. I mean, in Lagos. Got a good job, grew and grew. And of course, in this job, oh, you, then you get, you get all the negatives at work. And then I'm getting people picking on me left, right, and center, the, the typical thing you experience if you're doing well. Because I was doing well. I was in a department then called Treasury where my job was to go out there and, and get funds for people to come and invest in the bank. and. I was doing well. Envy comes in. Hatred comes in. Jealousy comes in. And so, problem starts again. And in the end, I got fed up. But of course, not to start talking about the political scenario in Nigeria and all the things that happened, then I had to leave. Came over to England. And then guess what? The new trick of life started. Racism. And I'm applying for every job I can find that made sense, nothing worked. And I'm attending every workshop, every event, every... Um, I had to take up new courses. Because as far as the system is concerned, oh yeah, so you have education in Nigeria, that's nothing. You, that is not connected with what we have here. You have to start all over again. And so I started all over again. And then I had to face the racism. I had to deal with all types of jobs. And then eventually got a good job. But of course, eventually made redundant because the job started, went in, into liquidation. Huge company, telecoms company. American company based in the UK doing really well. But who would have known? Who would have thought? Made redundant now have three kids to feed but of course three kids to feed no job no money how do you think i was coping by this time and that was when i now realized i had to use whatever I savings i had then to go and find a skill and put in my hands hence i come up with programs like this to help you if you are struggling because i have been there i have been there I had to find a way to empower my hands such that my children will not starve. 
because I realized by this time I had three kids, I realized that if I was going searching for more jobs, I would then be put in this strict program. You cannot take your child to doctor. You cannot take your child to this. You cannot go on school trips. You cannot. And I realized there was need for me to be my own person. Man, know thyself. I knew I had to know myself. But of course, it did not end like that, that easy. I lost everything. By this time I owned a home, I was paying mortgage and then obviously there's no steady income coming in. I had no home. We came from a four, four bedroom house and foster the whole family and all the things. We had to leave everything behind in the house. I moved into a tiny little flat. And I've had to put my children through all of that. And then, of course, at this stage, my husband, who now is being looked at as, okay, you are the man, provide, is now slowly deteriorating into depression. Because he couldn't handle the pressure. And so I had to find a way to stay strong, to keep things going, to keep my children going, to keep the business going. And so I'm going through all of these stages. This I can share with you because this is what life does to us. This is what they call the tricks of life. This is what the trick question is about life. Because it does these things to you to frustrate you. Now, if I wasn't this kind of, I don't know how it was, but God kind of helped me on. God kind of helped me on. If I wasn't this open to God's guidance, do you know how bitter I would be by this stage? Do you know how angry I would be by this stage? Do you know how sad and depressed I would be at this stage? No, but I realized I had children. I had responsibilities to take care of. And so when I see people out there just throwing words at you and then they tell you how lucky you are and how, uh, how you haven't experienced what they experience, I sometimes just, just keep quiet and not say anything. Because you would think that was the end of my problem. No, it didn't end there. My husband obviously struggling with his experiences because remember this is one of the things from all these programs that I watch and listen to this one says power of visual visualization this one is no limit person this one is the ultimate goals program this one is um, healing this one is the power the power to shape your destiny so at this stage i had started the business um and then one of the biggest things they did for us was a program called neuro-linguistic programming and it, and it was about how your mind reasons and how your thoughts and your your communication connects to your mind and your thinking and and so I was so excited with this program because this program allowed me to see the things that I wasn't seeing. And for me, it was like one of the best investments I ever made. It, it wasn't me just funding it because the government part funded it for women who were getting into business. And so it was quite exciting for me. So when I got this understanding, of how our mind creates the things that we're dealing with. From then on, I was attending the events, the events and all, buying the books, buying the CDs and empowering myself and empowering myself and empower. And this is why I come here to chat with you about this, because this is the one thing that has strengthened me and held me together. And so, knowing now what was going on, I'm struggling to cope. But of course, my husband going through his own problems as well. Remember, everybody is at different stages. Every 
everybody's at different stages in life being the tricks of life that's the big message i want to share with you understand these tricks of life so everything that i've been going through in as much as they hurt and they were painful and they were sad eventually right now they have enriched my life they have made me realize how no matter the pain i can cope but everybody goes through things and it makes me laugh because i i get these issues with my relatives sometimes and my friends sometimes because i don't allow these burdens to weigh me down that's why i'm telling you these things i don't allow these pains to hold me down and i become i become resentful and i become um um angry and and i become irritated such that i don't want to talk to anybody anymore such that i can hold grudges and that's what lots of people do out there so when you do that that's when you lock yourself away in your mind and you end up imprisoning your mind that's when i'm saying to you free your mind because when you free it when you let go of all these pains you will now appreciate what this gift of life is but of course i take you back a bit more so my husband now is going through these stages of his own problem being that yes he's not able to provide this is him man of the house and he's veering into things that are so unnecessary alcoholism and you know you know the short term gain for you think is going to give you a bigger meaning of life it wasn't getting anywhere there so typical wife i will moan and i will complain and then that's causing more and more problem between me and him and then of course if you're a man out there you will know uh -huh. that wife she knocks too much she's complaining too much she's moaning she's stressing me out and so what happens he goes out there and starts having an affair having affairs not an affair affairs which i can count how many and you would then again think that that should weaken me and make me bitter make me angry yes at the time i was angry at the time i was irritated at the time but then it never crossed my mind to say okay that's it let me end my marriage and why was that because then i have children i have four children and i'm thinking how would they feel about this and so it was difficult but i carried on and so this is a big message to you now that i have been through it all i have seen it all i have been pained i have been weakened i have been made to feel nothing but it hasn't stopped me from being this amazing person that i am i have not let it make me bitter i have not let it twist me around I've not let it break me for the person that I am and so this trick that life plays on all of us which is I don't know how your scenario is because everybody's got a scenario even the rich people have their scenario poor people have scenario educated people have scenarios I don't know what your scenario is but the point is, life plays tricks at all of us. And then the question was, but why? The why is to frustrate us. The why is so that we, we, we move on this passage of time, we go through the passage of time, and we offer nothing to life. And this is why when I get inspired and these thoughts clearly open themselves to me i have to sit here and i have to share them with you 
because the minute I share them with you there's nothing life can do about this anymore it's out there it's out there and it's going to enrich lives it's going to enrich minds it's going to make people who are struggling with scenarios in their life to wake up and wake and and come out of it you don't know how many times i have to argue with my husband day in day out it got to a point i started wondering what is the point of this and in my head i'm having thoughts and thoughts and thoughts i mean one of the most recent argument we had he said you know we are two headstrong people you are so stuck up on what you think and I'm stuck up on what I'm thinking. And I say, oh really? We're headstrong? I didn't know that. You see, one of the biggest issues, especially in marriage, is communication. Because while he says headstrong, what I was hearing is stubborn. He said, no, I didn't mean stubborn. I meant headstrong. Okay, I don't know what that means. Oh, it means you, you, whatever you, your opinion is, you want to stay with it. Okay, but see, that's what it is, especially in marriages. We get so confused. We we don't hear what because we're in this state of mind. We're not hearing anymore what the other person is saying. And so, what that is causing in the other person, we don't know. Frustration, anger, bitterness, twistedness, whatever you can think about, all the negatives are popping out. And then eventually something comes out. And when that thing comes out, it becomes unpalatable. It becomes unbearable. And then it, it, it causes more problems. And then more problems. And then... So you live in this completely bitter, bitter life. Walking through this passage of time. And you know the one thing with time? You cannot bank time. You cannot save time. You, you cannot tell time... Hold on, I'm coming. Because this, this, this was an interesting one. I mean, I love taking pictures. So most times I struggle with my husband with the pictures. He takes the pictures. And and I would dress up and I will make him ask, please take me a picture. But I hate having to say, please take me a picture. I just wish when I'm all dressed up, be excited and say, oh, you look amazing. Let me take you a picture. I, this, this is me. This is what I'm thinking. And so this particular day, we were busy doing, again, videos, so many types of videos. And I still wanted to take these pictures. So late in the night, let's take this picture. And so yes, now he's ready and he's equally tired. And suddenly we're thinking, he said, oh, oh, there's no battery in the camera. And I'm thinking, I'm getting frustrated now. But in the end, we do, we do take the pictures. And as I'm taking the pictures, my, my emotions are dropping and dropping and dropping. And suddenly I'm realizing, oh, do I really need to keep doing this? But you see, why I then really needed to take that picture was because I knew that if I didn't take, for me, pictures are memories. Pictures are memories. And why are they so important to me? My dad was like that. Okay, unfortunately, when my dad passed, um, in my village where all his things had been taken to, including all the pictures he had taken, um, again, we got attacks from the international world, Shell BP. It's a story that one day I'll tell you. And they had sent people to go and burn down our village. And so our home was one of the places that was burnt. And so all the images that my, my dad took all went with the fire. So my whole home was burnt down. But the message I got from my dad taking amazing pictures was to share himself to generations unborn. And so for me, I just love to be in pictures so that, again, typical African, oh yeah, you should never talk about when you pass on. But eventually one day I'll pass on. And I want generations unborn to remember this person who was this. 
I don't want to be one of those people who just sneak through life. There are people who you hear they passed on and you can barely find one picture to represent who they were. And so it is a big thing for me. I want to be seen for who I was or who I am. Oh, this was this day, this was that day, and this was that day. So I love doing that. And I know that if that particular day has come and gone, that day has come and gone. Because you cannot bank time. You cannot bank a day. That's the thing with time. And so, for me, it mattered a lot that this had to be done on this day. So, that's what it is. It's about us realizing that for life to be fun, we need to be free. We need to be free from all these pains. We need to be free from all these negative experiences. We need to relax and allow our mind to let go. Let go of pains that we don't need because pains are not going to benefit you in any form in this passage of time. I mean, I like to just look at it like that and like that. And it's like, think of a slow, slow movie or, 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 or yes, yeah, slow time movie where it just goes like that. And so that's how our passage of time is. That's how our life is. And if all we are doing with that slow time movie that we're passing through time, because here is not home, and all we want to remind ourselves of that passage of time is how sad and how unhappy and how painful and how twisted and how bitter and how angry our life was. What use is that to anybody? What use is that to anybody? So this is one of the things that finally, finally hit me and I realized that all these years, all these years with all the pains I, I, I struggled with from childhood, that I was just being tricked by life. To weaken me, to poison my mind, to imprison me, to, to confuse me. And if it wasn't the grace of God that held me together, I probably wouldn't be here sitting down and chatting with you about life. So the big message is we all have this trick. This trick is happening to all of us. So you need to let go. You need to open your mind wider. And just my, 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 little, my little understanding right now is every minute something that is trying to get into my heart happens. I just say, oh, that's another trick. That's another trick. Because this is happening everywhere. Even in your household, my immediate household, I have my children fighting each other, arguing with each other. And they get really bitter about it. And I just laugh and I say, you guys have no idea how far life can push. And then you get the outer family relatives further away, equally arguing over nothing. People that you don't even see on a daily basis getting angry over nothing. Another trick, another trick of life. And then of course you're arguing with your wife or you're arguing with your husband. Another trick. And you're arguing with your best friends because um, they don't want to see things the way you see things. And, I, and, I, and I'll tell you one of the, the, the things I found out as well. is certain words that trigger these things. Um, lack of communication. Oh yeah, when you said this, I, I thought you meant that. And you, you also hear, um, I, 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 don't, I don't trust you. Words like that. So lack of trust. Lack of trust could not trigger something that causes problem. Um, 
I disagree with you. That's a big one. So somebody said something this way and this person said it that way and no, we are both, we are both not agreeing. And just because we both don't agree does not mean that we should become enemies. Does not mean that we should, we should, we should not get angry and bitter and twisted. But no, we do it. People do it. Just because they disagree with somebody, that is enough to cause confusion. You don't trust. You're not communicating. We disagree. And so these are enough reasons to cause this twisted, bitter life that you're going to now have. Because this is what they said. They said, once you create enmity with somebody, sometimes that person does not even know what you are feeling. And you know, even when we now say lifestyle, that's causing the, 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 the bigger diseases that we're dealing with now, things like diabetes and, and high blood pressure and cancer and uh, uh, arthritis and all of that. In as much as we're saying lifestyle, do you know stress is one of the biggest problems of illnesses? Did you know that? And where does stress come from? It could just be with you hating the fact that somebody said something that you hated. I mean, you hear things like, oh, the way he looked at me, I didn't like it. The way she looked at me, what she said, and her body language, and her reaction when I said, you know, we then pick up and pick up and pick up, and we're, we're like little dogs, and we sniff and sniff and sniff, and the more we sniff, the more angry we get. And in as much as that is even hanging there, don't you even try going into the realm of jealousy and envy? Why does she look that way? Why does she do her makeup like that? Why is she wearing that hair? Why does she not know that she's old and she should stop dressing like that? Why does she not know that she's young and she should stop? You know, so we sit in our world and we have this huge opinion about somebody else. You know, the other day we were just chatting and yes, I have this YouTube channel and trust me, I am grateful to every one of you who take your time to listen to the things I share with you or the things, the, the skills I share with you or, you know, all the things I come here to share with you. I am grateful to all of you. But then we get the ones who come and all they ever have to say is negative. Why did you do it that way? Why didn't you do it the other way? And what do you think you're doing like that? And why are you dressed like that? And why are you wearing blonde hair? And why are you wearing black hair? And why is your makeup like this? Why do you not stick to what you know? I, I get all types of negative comments and I tell you, <laughs> You know, one of the things that life gives you when it puts you through the ringer, like the story I just told you about how my life has been, is giving you thick skin. That's why I say to people most times when they're going through really difficult times, I say, don't worry about it. You are going to come out on the other side shining. You know why? Because you've seen it all. You've experienced it all. You now know what it's like to be humiliated, to be abandoned, to be irritated, you know, to, for people to have no regard for you, for people to disrespect you, for people to take you for granted. You have experienced it all. So while life might be thinking is throwing tricks at you and you can handle it, you are going to be the one laughing last. I am laughing last. I'm sorry, but I am laughing last. You know why? I have seen it all. I have seen all types of negatives thrown at me. And so that's why I can afford to sit here and guide you to understand that when these negatives are coming to your life, they are tests, they are tricks. And it's for you to be wiser, to be stronger above it, such that you can be the one who becomes free. 
because in you, in you are great things hidden away. God has hidden amazing things in you. I know that because I know I have great things all inside me. And this is one of the reasons I say to people, live from the inside. Because if you try living from the outside, being the one that everybody loves, being the one that does what people want to see, being the one that they tell you jump and you say how high, if you are living from the outside, there is no strength to you. People are manipulating you. People are going to twist and turn you and bend you around. You, you're not going to be anyone that hangs and stays there for the test of time. But if you live from the inside, what works with you from inside? What works with you is God. God, God brings himself out from you. So each time I get inspirations like this, it's not me. It's the word of God that passes through me and guides me and says, you know all the things you've been going through? This is why they've been happening. Go and share it with the world. And so, you living from inside is for his glory. Because you're not living because somebody said, do it this way. Do it that way. Do you know how hard it's been to live? I mean, we had to leave London and come over to, the, to, to, to Essex. And one of the biggest things we've... In as much as the whole of England, you could deal with racism. Trust me, England is great compared to the rest of Europe. But still, to now be in a suburb, that got worse. The racism we had to deal with got worse. My children were frustrated. They were not happy with me that I moved them. But that is part of life. And you have to understand that for you to be able to make yourself stronger and get to know who you are. Hence, man, know thyself. And now I know that I am this great person with all these experiences of life. And these experiences are the things that I can share with people to strengthen them, to make them understand that no matter how hard things may go, there is a deeper meaning to who you are. And inside you are these gems that God has planted and only you can bring that out. I mean, one of the, one of the CDs I was listening to um, by El Nightingale and he was explaining that in, in, of, in all of us are diamonds and that's where our mind is. The diamonds are in there and what we tend to do is we go out there and look for things. We're constantly begging people to give us job, to help us, to guide us, to, not knowing that in us are amazing things that God has planted there and only we can bring them out. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm going to have to stop it here. Um, one of the biggest things I'm going to do eventually, um, we're going to have a website for this channel, the Jofido International, and then all these talks that I give you are going to be written out in blog. Um, then one of the other things we're going to be doing is to create CDs out of these talks because I know they're so useful that most times you probably want to listen to them in the car when you're driving to work um, I've had people thanking me and saying thank you I listen to you first thing in the morning and late at night and so if you're stuck with just watching YouTube in order to get the messages um, you might be uncomfortable inconveniencing so we will come up with CDs where we will share it with you guys. Um, these are things in the process of being done. So website will be written in blog. So for people who enjoy reading, it will be there. And for people who like listening, we will create CDs. So all of these things are all coming together. And there's going to be so much more messages because I have really understood that the biggest part of us is our mind. And once we can clear the mind and clear all the clutter that's sitting there we will enjoy this passage of time called life and we will live a more healthier more fruitful and more beneficial and more amazing life and we will not die regretting not doing the things we should have done you know the messages will be clearer to you 
because the thing with the mind is when you engage it with negative positive don't come in you practically block them and that's what i mean by the praising because once you've locked your mind up in all the negatives you've imprisoned it you locked it away and so good things don't don't find a chance it's like it's like pouring black into into clear water or colored water into clear water you, you know it just messes it up so that's what it is we need to we need to find a way find a way to clear out all the clutter so i'm hoping this video will be able to help you achieve that and you will start seeing life from another angle and that's like i always say when i finish sharing this with you is also a message for me and i also sit down and hear myself guiding myself as well so there's so much more that's going to be coming your way from this from this channel thank you so much for watching remember to share it with your friends remember to you know give us the thumbs up remember to subscribe because there's a lot that's going to be coming so see you in the next video and god bless you